are looking at JFK Stadium here in Hoboken, New Jersey, where this afternoon, Cablevision of Hudson County is proud to present the high school football game of the week, and it doesn't get any bigger than this one, the state championship, Group 3 North, and Jimmy Cavallo back again, Anthony Fusilli also here, and yes. uh, Sparta comes in today. Into Red Wing Country. Into Red Wing Country, the finals, the Sparta Spartans, the Hoboken Red Wings, the finals of Group 3. All on the line today, and uh, when we uh, last did games down here, we thought this game would take place at uh, possibly Giant Stadium, but a funny thing happened along the way. Hey, along the way, uh, they only take the top five, is it? Six. Top six teams, uh, and Sparta. Red Wings, Sparta, and Red Wings did not get the nod, but here they are, and uh, Sparta coming off a big win over Passaic Valley, and... Uh, Pat Shea in his fifth year, first time he's been to the finals. He's happy to be here. And uh, as we said, Passaic Valley beat them 14 nothing, a convincing win. They took out one undefeated giant in the state playoffs, and now they look to take out their second. And, you know, it's kind of interesting because of that win, it cost Hoboken a chance to go to Giant Stadium. Sparta was the fourth seed. Hoboken was the second seed. Sparta knocks off the top seed, and then when you combine the power points, it left uh, Hoboken out of the stadium, but they're here in their home turf. So uh, now Sparta has to come in and try to do what they did That's last it. week. I mean, basically, four knocks off one, two wins, and then two and four don't equal a trip to the stadium. There you go. If you can figure that out. But, Sp <laughs> again, Sparta has to find another way to uh, slay another giant. Hey, and uh, this is their first game on the turf. Me and you were speaking to Coach Pat Shea earlier. They practiced this week at Rutgers under the bubble, and Ed Stinson, he loves the turf. He's been here. He's got the home game as he looks to repeat. Eddie Stinson, what a year he had last year, 10-1, and one, won the Group 3 Section 1 title against Ramsey, and this year coming in at 10-0, and 0, undefeated. Stinson's got all his skill players back, and you know Eddie's always ready. Well, you know, some of those players we'll see for the final time here on this Hoboken field. Let's listen in to Ed Stinson. Assigned don't feed her! Assigned don't feed her! Hey, baby, that's what it's all about, man. State championship time, that final huddle for those seniors as they gather around their commander-in-chief, Ed Stinson, his 13th year, nine consecutive here at Hoboken. And, boy, you got to love the emotion inside that huddle, Tony. Well, one of the Hoboken coaches said it. This is it. This is for all the marbles right now, Jim, and we'll get to see Rashad Casey, the talented quarterback uh, who has had a ter tremendous career here. And we'll also get to see the final game for uh, Luis Terso and Wilbur Valdez. So a lot on the line and a lot of great memories for this class. Can they go out one more time with a victory? We are set to go. Sean Brown kicks off. It's Terso. And Rayvon Anderson back deep. It's going to be Anderson. Drops the ball, picks it up. Anderson at about the 18. He will go down at about the 19. So Rayvon Anderson, a little trouble with the handle, but nevertheless, the Red Wings will take over at about the 27-yard line. And out comes their man, Rashard Casey. 6'3", 195-pound senior. He's passed for over 1,000 yards. We'll take a look at the offense. There's Casey, the man. Wilbur Valdez, the punishing fullback. Louis Terso, Rayvon Anderson, Juan Lopez, and Rory Prelo. Keep an eye on the junior, Ravone Anderson. Here's Casey, the first handoff today. Goes to that junior, Anderson. Looks to the outside, Anderson. Cuts outside, picks up about six. And a loose ball. Check this out. And look out now. Sparta's got it. Ravone Anderson had trouble with the ball in the kickoff, and now he puts the ball back on the carpet on his first carry. You don't know if it's nerves or what, Jim, but uh, Sparta gets a huge break. Sparta gets a huge emotional break on the road. First carry of the day. Anderson coughs it up and puts the pressure on the defense. Take another look. And it's hard to say how it came out. It looked like uh, number 12 for Sparta was the one who made the tackle. Jeff Tuber. Out comes the senior dominated offensive team. Justin Potts, the QB. Hands off to the big back. That's Sean Brown. Brown rumbles his way. Brown last week against Passaic Valley. Over 100 yards. Two touchdowns. A kid who with a good day today. Justin Potts. You see him right there. The QB. Brian Dietz. Kevin White. 
Mike Manasi, Jeff Tauber, and Todd Ferguson is the tight end. Adam Hoja, Mark Mastrandria, John Langerap, Chris Smith, and Clark Wickander. Second down, about nine for the Spartans. Potts comes out. He's got Brown. And Brian Dietz in the backfield. Here's Potts. Hands it to the second back through. Check that. That's Kevin Wyatt. Wyatt, just a sophomore, stopped short after a pick of about two. So it'll be third and long for the Spartans. And we'll probably see the first pass from Mr. Justin Potts. There you see the defense for Hoboken, Sakala, Prelu, Bolden, and Dan Benia. Fine linebackers in Ravone Anderson, Wilbur Valdez, and sophomore Steven Burson. And then Donnie Huggins, Juan Lopez, Rashad Casey, and there he is, one of the best defensive backs in Hudson County, Louis Terso. So passing situation for Spartans. Potts can throw the ball over 1,000 yards this year. Receiver split wide right. And here's Potts, first pass of the day. He's got pressure, Potts is in trouble. Potts flush left, lets it go. He's got a man, but there's the defense to knock it away. Excellent play right there by Juan Lopez. Well, I'll tell you, their quarterback uh, made a great play. Ed Stinson, the coach of Hoboken, said he's a kind of a Fran Tarkenton type quarterback. He got out of trouble, Jim, and then Juan Lopez really batted that ball down at the last second. But look at this. He had three Red Wings. He had Prelo, Bonilla, and also Wilbur or uh, Rory Prelo chasing him. He, he managed to get out of that somehow. And Kelly Stevens had a little room right here. But Lopez was able to close the gap. Oh, check that. That was intended for Mike Thomas, the 6'3 junior. They will punt right here from the 33-yard line. Sparta electing to play a little bit of a field position game. And we'll see. The punt will go out of bounds. So good moves by Justin Potts to uh, really avoid a loss. But, you know, Jim, you get the feeling that if Hoboken could have done it all over, all over again, they probably would have wanted to put their defense on the field first. And check this out. That was only a five-yard. We'll go through the uh, offense of this. Casey, Valdez, Terso, Anderson, Lopez, and Prelo. Averhoff, Gonzalez, Quan, Bolden, and Alfano. Only picked up about 12 yards on the punt right there. But nevertheless, Casey comes back out. Here's Anderson with his second chance. Rayvon Anderson has some room. Plows ahead. Picks up about eight yards on the play. So how much confidence does Ed Stinson have in Ravone Anderson? A lot. He gave the ball the first time back after that turnover. And that showed something. There you see the defensive line. Adam uh, Hoja, Chris Smith, Matt Collins, and Clark Wickander. Mistrata. Mist Strange here, that is, my Brown, man. Stevens, and Ferguson. Manasi, Tauber, and Thomas in the secondary. So second down, about three for Hoboken. Casey comes up. He's got Valdez and Anderson. Here's Casey. Hands off to the second back through. It's Anderson. Anderson. Close to a first down. We'll see if he got it. The wraps put on by number 55. Strangia there, Jim, on uh, one of the first... Uh, Spartans to find number 35. And there you see our officials, Cartota, McNeil, Emery, Marina, and D. Domenko. A lot of pressure on those guys today. Final football game of the season. We were out at Giant Stadium yesterday. A couple questionable calls in some, some group finals in the St. Joe's and the Pro Field B final. A late pass interference call that enabled St. Joe's to beat DePaul. And what about the implications of that victory? Here you have Hoboken, the number two team in the state, according to the AP poll. St. Joe's was number one. And a loss in that game, Hoboken could have been playing for a state championship. Uh, number one ranking also. Now what an effort by DePaul. Really nobody gave him a chance coming in. And there they are with three minutes left. That game was tied 26 all before the interference call. So here's Casey. The first down they got. Casey gives it to Valdez. The big punishing back. Plowing his way. Valdez goes from cuts it to the outside. And a good looking run by Wilbur Valdez. 6'2", 235 pounds. And when he gets it going, clear out. Well, Wilbur's a big-time player. He's the kind of kid who waits for playoffs and have his best games, although he's had a tremendous season and he's been an all-conference and all-county fullback and linebacker. It's what he does in state playoff games that people remember. Obviously, last year in the uh, semifinals, he had a terrific game, and so far his first start is a good one. The big fullback gets another first down. Here's Casey from the 40. Hands it to Anderson. Anderson cuts it inside, and Anderson plowing for yardage, and there goes the junior we all know and love down across the 50-yard line in the Spartans' territory. And that's the thing about Hoboken. You cannot set your sights on any one of these backs. 
I mean, Wilbur Valdez in another system could have ran over for over 1,000 yards. He ran for 750. You look at Anderson and Terso. They ran for over 1,200 yards. And Terso hasn't touched the ball yet. <laughs> there you see uh, Ravone Anderson. He gets some nice blocking up front. Gets a nice block by Wilbur Valdez. He cuts in. And a couple of Spartans try to bring him down. I think finally Matt Collins at number 52. Clark Wickander finally brought him down. Here's Valdez again straight ahead, plowing his way for about three on the play. And Anthony, we mentioned a couple more of the games yesterday in North Bergen, losing to Hackensack 7-6. And there was some controversy in that game on the Hackensack touchdown. 12 men on the field. Well, it's something that uh, what can go wrong has gone wrong for North Bergen the last four years playing Hackensack. And, uh, you know, that play killed them, Jim, but they still didn't score any points in the second half, and they had total offense uh, maybe twice as much as Hackensack in that game. Just did not find a way to get it in the end zone. Did not find a way. Here's Casey, second down and six. Casey hands it off inside. Look out, there's Lewis Terso. Lewis Terso. Six touchdowns this year. The 5'9", 175 pound senior and boy, you just never know who's going to get the ball in this offense. A lot of people. Good little ball fake there by Casey. Gets it to Terso. He follows the blockers. Everybody putting their hats on the ball today. Jim, a lot of people believe here in Hoboken that number 20 really sets the tone for this team. He's got a huge heart. Last week in the playoffs, he had only three carries, Jim, but it was over 100 yards, and he had two long touchdown runs. So a lot of people believe this, as Terso goes, so does this team. Here's Casey on first down. Here's Terso once again. Terso off the left side. Goes forward for about four yards on the play. Stopped at about the 26-yard line. And right now we're in Hoboken football. Uh, game plan, uh, what they want to do. They want to pull the uh, guards and the tackles, and they definitely want to hold on to the football, get those big guys in front for Terso, run off tackle, and hold on to the football. It isn't pretty, but it works. And Terso picked up about seven on that play, so it'll be second down at about three. And you saw Ruben Gonzalez, the junior, leading the way, the offside guard coming on a little stunt right there out in front of the running back as Casey comes over. And I say it isn't pretty, Jim, because obviously he, Ed Stinson knows he has enough talent on this team to kind of open it up and, and uh, let his talented quarterback do his thing. But Ed Stinson believes in ball control, and he also believes in, that his special teams and his defense will set the tone and control the game. And that's the way he plays the game. Second down and three from the 26. Here's Casey. He gives it, keeps it on this one. Casey around the outside looking for him. Casey moving and juking, works his way towards the out of bounds. A flag comes down late. We'll see what this one well, is. Jim, actually it wasn't a late penalty. They're going to call Rory Prelo for holding. The official couldn't get the flag out of his back pocket. Uh. I was watching it. It was a definite hold by number one, Rory Prelo. And uh, the official spotted at the back. Judge, I think, spotted it right away. But he could, had problems getting the flag out. And that will definitely go against Hoboken as the referees talk to the Spartan defensive captain, number 55, Mike, Mark Mastrandria. And they will walk it off. Ten-yard penalty. We'll set the ball all the way back to the 39-yard line. We'll bring up a second down and about 18. You were right on it. There's Eddie Stinson. Last nine years trying to get win back-to-back -back Group 3 Section 1 titles. 10-1 and one a year ago. 10-0 and, and this year. Trying to go 11-0. And, oh. and here's Casey on second down and 18. So many things this offense can do. Casey hands off to Anderson. Anderson's in trouble. Anderson's going to go down. The first man there was number 52, Clark Wickander. And a great tackle by Clark Wickander and good penetration by the Spartans up front. Looks like that holding penalty kind of got the uh, Red Wings out of sync. And uh, that time, Spartans got good penetration. Some of the guards, Andre Bolden, had problems pulling on that play. And uh, that was a big play for Spartan as now Hoboken appears to be going the wrong way. Be third and about 21. 540 to go here in the first quarter. No score. Cable vision of Hudson County. And you take a look at a man in his fifth year of coaching, Pat Shea. And Pat Shea, uh, one of those coaches, you can tell, very calm before the game. Gave us some insight on his team, and we appreciate it. Nice guy. Here's Casey. Third and long, 21. Casey, blind, blind side pressure. Casey goes down. First man to get him was 47, Todd Ferguson. 
Well, it looked like Casey might have spotted Ferguson a little bit too late, but I think Casey misjudged Ferguson's speed because I think he looked back and said, that's okay, I'll be able to get out of this. But Ferguson never quit, and he was able to bring down Casey by the ankles. Watch this. Casey sees him, and then now he knows, but... Uh, Ferguson shows tremendous speed from the backside. He was in a heap of trouble from the start there, Casey, because even if Ferguson doesn't get him, you'll see the pursuit coming up right here. They really had this closed down. So into punt is Keon Walker. Keon has the ability to get off some boomers. Drops the first one, but there's really no rush coming. It's a good thing for Hoboken. Low line drive punt. They'll let it roll. Look at this roll. This one's going to roll all the way down inside the five-yard line. Just keep letting it roll. Unbelievable. 49-yard punt for Keon Walker, and look where that one rolls to. Well, Wilbur Valdez was uh, getting a little, really being a gambler. It looked like he was going to step into the end zone soon, but uh, he let it get every inch he could. And, you know, that, that special teams we talked about, Ed Stinson takes a lot of pride in his special teams down here. They have a little problem with the punt right away. But uh, finally they get the great roll and uh, backs up Sparta now inside their one-yard line. We'll call it 48 yards on the punt from Keon Walker. And Sparta is back about as deep as you can be. Let's see what they can do to get out. Out comes Justin Potts. His big back, Sean Brown. There's Potts on first. Potts gives it to Brown. Brown hit right away. Look out in safety territory, but he got out. <laughs> he was very close, Jim. He did a little spin at the last second, and he kind of saved himself from getting caught into the end zone. He's a load. Look at Brown. 5'8", 220 pounds, and he gets it going. He got hit immediately. It looked like uh, number 31, Jason Sakala, got a piece of him, or Joe Sakala got a piece of him right away, and he was able just to get out of the end zone. Let's see if Pat Shea lets his senior QB throw one here. Second and 10, backed up deep. Here's Potts. Potts. Look and roll. He's in trouble. Potts. Completion. Unbelievable. Justin Potts in all kinds of trouble, but was able to find number 31, Mike Manasi. Well, Jim, before you mentioned the play, you said, let's see if uh, Coach Shea elects to pass the football. And I said, well, you're talking like an announcer in my mind because there's no way you want to throw the football. But he did. He rolled out. Ravon Anderson had him. He got rid of the ball, and Terso brings him down at the one-yard line. But that was playing with fire. But you got to like the escapability of the young quarterback for uh, the Spart Spartans. Well, young in terms of me and you, but he is a senior. All right. <laughs> still, uh, we still got about 12 years on him. When I saw that, we'll see what they do here. Third down, still backed up deep from the one-yard line. Spartans. Really in trouble here. Hands off, and there's some room for Brown. Brown's going to get the first down. Sean Brown just with the doctor ordered for Sparta right there. Lumbers is way ahead. And Sean Brown, with a good day today, can go over 1,000 yards. Came in with 933, and you see right there how he got it. Well, he looks like a little uh, version of Greg Haywood, the uh, famous back that played for Passaic. He's a load, and uh, some players from Hoboken trying to get his ankles, and... He did a good job of avoiding some tackles and some poor tackling from Hoboken. He gets the first down. About 16 yards on the carry for Sean Brown. Here's Potts on first. Potts keeps it. Potts around the left side. Nowhere to go. Tries to work his way out. And he does. But Sparta, no matter what happens, a small victory in this first quarter just to get out of that field position because you did not want to punt from the position they were in as we hit the two-minute mark. And they got the ball out, out of there. Nice tackle by Wilbur Valdez and company. Andre Bolden also there. And they were able to bring down Potts. But like you said, Jim, a uh, something that Sparta had to do. They had to establish something early. They wanted to try to stay in this game early, not give up a quick touchdown to Hoboken. And as long as they play and keep this game the way it is, you know they're going to feel confident that they can win this game. Here's Potts on second down and about nine. Potts looks to throw. Potts out to the flats. Throws it. Intended for number 31. That ball was either tipped or the wind got under it. Mike Manasi was out there, but it fell short. I think the wind might have got a piece of it, or Justin Potts just lost the handle on it. Now, we don't have any record books here, Anthony, but I'd imagine that Sparta's trying to set the all-time length of a drive right, right here where they started because you can't start much deeper. Well, Patrick Shea, their head coach, said to us, we like to hold on to the football, and we like to kind of uh, inch our way up the field. Uh, he meant that. He certainly did. Third down and nine. Another passing situation for Potts. 
Receiver split wide right. Thomas. His pot hands off inside the Brown. Brown, did he drop that ball? Yes, he did. Hoboken in on it first, I believe. It looks like a Red Wing at the bottom of the pile got that yeah, ball. Yeah, Wilbur. Wilbur Valdez, the senior linebacker, who makes a play when Hoboken desperately needed one. And I say that because Hoboken obviously uh, let Sparta off the hook a couple times so far this game. And a nice hit up front. Looked like w Ravone Anderson and, and also uh, Andre Bolden. It was it was Bolden who got his big paw on that ball and snagged it away from Brown. And then Bolden almost actually uh, recovered the ball, but then Valdez came in. But there's a big break. Ball sits just inside the 20-yard line. You can't uh, take that senior leadership lightly as Andre Bolden strips it and another senior recovers it, Wilbur Valdez. One minute to go, first quarter. Here's Casey, hands off to Anderson. Anderson, nice hold to the right side, but it collapses immediately by the line. The cornerback came up. So Wilbur but he Valdez picks up six. makes a big play for uh, Hoboken, Jim, because it looked like maybe Sparta was starting to establish something. Well, they got out of that hole, but then they did just what they didn't want to do by fumbling it. Hoboken right now has to put the points on the board, Jim. You know that they don't want to play anymore with Sparta. They're on their home field. It's the finals of a uh, state Second down, a long three for Hoboken. Here's Casey. Casey, hands off straight ahead. Really nothing going right there. Good job by the left side of that Sparta line to stack up Valdez. And I think Matt Collins is one of the guys up front to kind of slow him down, number 58. As you see, three guys to the ball. Also, uh, Wickander up front there too and that play marks the end of the first quarter a scoreless first quarter Jim and I think there would probably be some surprise in that yeah but nevertheless a tough hard hitting first quarter we'll take it down to the other end of the field Red Wings with a third and four inside the red zone no score end of the first quarter we're back In today's stressful world, it's important to take time to do something good for yourself. Bevi Natural Food Centers has served its customers with the finest natural foods and health products since 1970. From natural cosmetics to supplements, you'll find it at Bevi. Stop into either of our two convenient locations and let Bevi help you help yourself. Bevi Natural Food Centers, 6302 Bergen Line Avenue, West New York, 4005 Bergen Line Avenue, Union City. Or carpet, tile, linoleum, remnants, stop into Consumer Carpets. Choose from our many styles and colors here in our own warehouse and showroom. Consumer Carpets offers the latest in carpet and linoleum at unbeatable prices. Call 792-2712 for your free shop-at-home estimate, and your carpet will be installed within 48 hours. So for low prices on hundreds of carpets, tile, and linoleum, there's only one place to shop. It's Consumer Carpets, conveniently located at 3408 Kennedy Boulevard in the Jersey City Heights section. For fun and excitement the entire family can enjoy, bring them down to Bullwright Lanes. Bullwright has recently renovated its lanes and has a state-of-the-art computerized scoring system. Come in and let us assist you in our pro shop and enjoy the friendly atmosphere at our snack bar and lounge. The whole family can enjoy the fun at Bullwright Lanes. 714 Summit Avenue, Union City, 864-2667. Car Audio and Security Designers has outstanding values on all accessories. Digital AM-FM pull-out tape deck starting at $99. In-dash digital AM-FM tape decks, $99 installed. Pioneer detachable face radios starting at $199. Denon radios with CD changer control starting at $219. And kicker boxes starting at $95. Car Audio and Security Designers, Patterson Plank Road, behind the Coach House Diner, North Bergen. Levy Sports Center in West New York, New Jersey, since 1937, is the headquarters for the serious athlete. Levy specializes in custom team uniforms, jackets, athletic equipment, trophies, and awards for teams, leagues, businesses, and schools at discount prices. Levy's has a large selection of football and soccer equipment and shoes. Mention this ad and receive an additional 10% discount. Levy's at 6118 Bergenline Avenue, West New York. Your plan for every sport fan.
you can't get a Taylor's Fit at a department store, you can only get it at Vihan Taylor's. Family owned and operated for over 30 years, Vihan's been the name in custom men's clothing. You'll find quality suits imported from Italy. At Vihan's, you're dealing with the owners, not salespeople, so you can be sure you'll get the best fit. At Vihan's, a custom-made suit is not as expensive as you think. You can get one for about the same price as off the rack. And now, Vihan's has free parking for your added convenience. Vihan's, 60th and Burger Line in West New York. JFK Stadium, standing room only. Good crowd here today down in Hoboken to see the Red Wings and Sparta brought a good crowd too. They always do in the state finals so when it comes down to this. Early on for Hoboken, uh, Ravone Anderson with 28 yards is a leading ball carrier. Terso has two carries for 15 yards. And Wilbur Valdez has uh, four carries for 21 yards. So here we go, third and four for Hoboken. Split wide left is Juan Lopez. Casey over center. Casey gives to Anderson. Anderson with the right side. He's got room. Head toward the end zone inside the five is Anderson, but he got the first down. Big play, Hoboken. Well, that time the boys up front gave him outstanding blocking. They, they uh, create a hole for him, and Ravone Anderson finds those holes as good as anybody uh, in Hudson County. He's so quick to the hole, Jim, and it's kind of a misdirection play. They love to run down here, but he got good blocking up front. He got a nice pull by Ruben Gonzalez. And there you see uh, Ravone Anderson, one tackle away from going into the end zone. And this is where Hoboken is virtually impossible to stop. A first down inside the five, the way they run the ball with all the stunts on the offensive line, somebody's got to make a play for Sparta. Flags fly, and this might help the Spartans right here if Hoboken was in motion. Well, the last drive, they shot themselves in the foot, nope, did Hoboken? I don't think this so. This is going against Sparta. We'll move it halfway closer to the goal line on the penalty, and that just makes things even tougher for the Spartans. Hey, and at this time, how about we thank uh, Lisa's on 10th for the fine food that they uh, supported us with at Giant Stadium. They brought out the spread. Today's a big Lisa's day. Right here we are in Hoboken, and a good percentage of these fans will be heading over to Lisa's for some of that fine stuff afterwards. Zini, eggplant, got those big... Uh, foot long sandwiches Jim how big was that sandwich last night uh, I was good for a foot and it was six feet in total <laughs> so I hope there wasn't any more than six guys there but here we go first and goal for the Red Wings the yard markers are on the ground Casey comes over center he's got Valdez Anderson and Terso Casey did he pull him off sides again yes he did so now Hoboken just trying to uh, outsmart the Spartans and uh this, I think, will become eventually Wilbur Valdez territory because Hoboken gets closer and closer, and then they like to give it to the big fullback. You see what Casey's doing right there. He's really barking out the calls, and he pulled off the Spartans. So Red Wings are moving the ball closer to the goal line without even snapping the ball yet. Two consecutive offsides for the Spartans. Once again, Valdez, Terso, and Anderson. Casey takes it himself. Whistles blow all over the place. I don't know if Casey... Got any closer? No, he did not. Good job by the nose guard that time over center. So far, that hole up. So far, Jim Rashard Casey hasn't been a factor in this game, and he is there, been there all everything as long as he has been here since a sophomore. We've seen Rashard progress through the couple years that we've got to see him play, and he has outstanding tools. He's being highly recruited by a lot of universities. Will he stay home? Will he go away? That will be the big question for Rashard. But right now. It could be Valdez time. Here's Wilbur. Off the right side. Wilbur puts his head forward. Did he get in? No, he did not. No signal. Whoa, what's this? A fumble. Look at this. Look at this. All of a sudden, referee signals Sparta ball, and somebody stripped Wilbur away. It was number 55 who's having an outstanding game, Mark. Oh. Mastrata, he... Uh, he, he picked up that football somehow at the bottom of the pile. You know, it was kind of funny, Jim. The official was about to signal a touchdown, and then he looked down, and I think he saw the ball pop free. The official right there was about to signal a touchdown, it looked like. Here's another look. This will be a good look for us right here. He just stripped it out of his hands, did number 55, I believe. Here you see, he's right there. He's taking the ball out of Valdez's hands. Two of the guys held him up, and the other guy stripped the ball. Oh, that's a close call right there. Mark Mastrangia comes up with another one, and look where the Spartans are once again. Here's Potts on first down. Potts trying to draw Red Wings off sides. 
to no avail. Potts tries to go straight ahead. Really goes nowhere close to being a safety. Unbelievable how backed up the Spartans offense is in the early in this first half. Well, but they'll take it after. Exactly. I mean, uh, they look up at the scoreboard and it says no score. And uh, they don't mind where they start their drive as long as they keep Hoboken out of the end zone. But a good job by Ravone Anderson and also Rory Prelo up front. I mean, I mentioned Hoboken was in that territory where they're virtually impossible to stop, but the Spartans found a way and give them credit for doing that. I believe that's the first time Valdez fumbled the ball all year down there. Here's Potts. Hands off on first down. Nothing going off that right side. Red Wings really battling on defense, not giving an inch. Ball carried that time by number 11, Brian Dietz. Andre Bolden was one of the first Red Wings there also. He got some help from, uh, looked like... Uh, Valdez also, Jim, so ball has really not moved. It's on about the one-yard line, so we'll see what Pat Shea will do here. He let Justin Potts throw deep in his own territory last time, and on the big third down last time, it was Sean Brown who found some room to get them out of uh, this hole. We'll see where they go this time. Receiver split wide right and left. Here's Justin Potts. Potts hands off to Brown, the second back through. No, he keeps it himself. Potts looking for the first down, not going to get there. So off the play, fake Potts circled around the right side on the keeper, but he will not get a first down, and Sparta will have to punt, but they'll take that. Lewis Terso was one of the guys who was right there for the tackle, but Andre Bolden, number 60, having a good game. You see Dan Benia doing a good job also, Whew. but Andre Bolden, one of the first guys there to make the tackle along with Lewis Terso. An excellent cut by Justin Potts. He was about three yards deep in the end zone when he made that cut to avoid the tackle. So in for the punt is Kelly Stevens, standing in the back of his end zone. Here's the snap to Kelly. Gets it off. Ball rolls as we picked up at about the 35-yard line. Juan Lopez. Lopez, what a good move. Juan Lopez! He drops the ball! No signal yet who's got it. We'll see. As the pile is untangled. Did Lopez fall back on it? Nope. But uh, another Red Wing Hope did, Hopkins got it. and it was Rory Prelo. Rory Prelo has got great hands, and uh, that time Hoboken was fortunate that the big guy was down there to cover up Juan Lopez's fumble. Here's the punt by Kelly Stevens. Lopez is going to do a nice job in fielding this bounce. And we saw other players in Hudson County have problems with these big punt returns in the past. Like you said, he did a good job of fielding it. And now we have to see what Hoboken does. On the first down, while we're in the replay, Ravone Anderson plows ahead for about four yards. And ball's in about the 18. You know, it's funny, Anthony. The last time Sparta was backed up at the end of the first quarter, they fumbled the ball, and Hoboken got on the 20. This time they were backed up, and after the punt, Hoboken took over on the 20 again. So a lot of pressure being put on this Sparta defense early on, but nonetheless, no points left as this Hoboken crowd a little surprised at what's going on early on. Here's second down. They go to Anderson again. Anderson around the right side. Anderson steps out of bounds at about the 14-yard line. He'll be short. That was the first down he had to get to about the 11. Jeff Tauber pushed him out of bounds, but Jim, you know, I'm not saying Hoboken's playing a little lackadaisical, but they're not playing the way they usually do. Uh, I know Sparta would feel they're having something to do with that, but you just see that they're putting the ball on the carpet a lot, and that's something they didn't do a lot during the year, and you got a question. Maybe are they a little flat right now? A little flat, maybe a little tense, maybe a little too wound up. You can get like that in these state finals. Here's third down and three. Casey. Gives to Valdez. Valdez plows ahead. He's got the room. Valdez jump on board the Wilbur Express towards the goal line. They're not giving him that touchdown again. Uh, it's going to be on the inch line, Jim. But Wilbur Valdez, he said, listen, I'm going to make up for what happened last time. And I'm going to put it on my shoulders. He got some good blocking up front. And then the big fullback does what he does best. He rumbles along. Looked like to me he got in the end zone. But the official marked it down at the inch line. Very close. We'll have to see as Wilbur goes down where exactly the ball is. Oh, that's a good call. That's a good call by the official. That ball was not over the goal line when he went down. Okay, so, uh, you know, the officials have a... As a timeout is called on the field, but maybe we'll take another look at that same replay and slow it down once again. You'll see as Wilbur Valdez goes down, he bounces into the end zone. We'll take another look. They'll come into the screen right here when Valdez goes down. You see the ball tucked under, and he is not in the end zone right there. It was an excellent call by the official. 
and a good job by number 52 Wickander finally bringing down Valdez and keeping him out of the end zone hey good job by the cable vision of Hudson County gang too giving us that nice nice replay set the record straight and there's Eddie Stinson how about we thank a few people for us being here today we got to thank also Hoboken and uh, Morris De Janeiro for the fine job of letting us come in and set up all year all year all we've year. been the welcome mat's been out by Morris and uh, the whole Hoboken game and K and C and breaks. JFK Stadium. K and C breaks up in North Bergen. When it's time to stop on the dime, check in with K and C, and after you get your breaks done, go over to stands and pick up a little sporting goods. I tell you Christmas what. Time. I tell you what. How about you go to stands first because they're only four blocks from here. Go to stands. You get your uh, your whole broken jersey. Maybe you pick up a Giants jersey, and then you head to K and C breaks. Hey, it's break Christmas meet. time, baby. It's time to head over to stands and. Open up a little bit. And one get, a, thing, get a few things under the tree. And one thing you must do is on the way back from KNC breaks, Lisa's on 10th. And you can, uh, let's see if Stinson gives Valdez another shot. Casey tries to go straight ahead. He slipped. Whistles fly. Did he extend the ball? Yes, he did. <laughs> There's the senior leadership of Rashard Casey. He knew the whistle wasn't blown yet. All he had to do was extend the ball over the goal line. That's exactly what he did. And Hoboken gets on the board first. You know, we're... Richard is so tall and you know it's uh, two inches that he's trying to pick up there and you said he saw a little hole right there and he dove right through it so good job by Richard Casey finding a hole when uh, didn't seem to be one and that's uh, good vision by Richard he was determined to get Hoboken into the end zone and in and comes in comes Donnie Huggins for the extra point a very important extra point and he's a good one because what we've seen over the last couple days they have not come easy extra points but Donnie splits the uprights over the gray wall on the back of JFK Stadium and the Red Wings are out 7 nothing. and this will pump some life into this Hoboken team and also into this Hoboken crowd who uh, at this point you'd have to say was kind of lulled to sleep by Sparta absolutely and for Sparta they'll just be happy to get the ball Outside the 10-yard line for a change. They've been backed up deep. It's Saturday afternoon, state finals time. Check it out. The Red Wings are out first. Spartans will be back. So will we. In today's stressful world, it's important to take time to do something good for yourself. Bevi Natural Food Centers has served its customers with the finest natural foods and health products since 1970. From natural cosmetics to supplements, you'll find it at Bevi. Stop into either of our two convenient locations and let Bevi help you help yourself. Bevi Natural Food Centers, 6302 Bergen Line Avenue, West New York, 4005 Bergen Line Avenue, Union City. Or carpet, tile, linoleum, remnants, stop into Consumer Carpets. Choose from our many styles and colors here in our own warehouse and showroom. Consumer Carpets offers the latest in carpet and linoleum at unbeatable prices. Call 792-2712 for your free shop at home estimate and your carpet will be installed within 48 hours. So for low prices on hundreds of carpets, tile and linoleum, is only one place to shop. It's Consumer Carpets, conveniently located at 3408 Kennedy Boulevard in the Jersey City Heights section. For fun and excitement the entire family can enjoy, bring them down to Bullwright Lanes. Bullwright has recently renovated its lanes and has a state-of-the-art computerized scoring system. Come in and let us assist you in our pro shop and enjoy the friendly atmosphere at our snack bar and lounge. The whole family can enjoy the fun at Bullwright Lanes, 714 Summit Avenue, Union City, 864-2667. Car Audio and Security Designers has outstanding values on all accessories. Digital AM-FM pull-out tape deck starting at $99. In-dash digital AM-FM tape decks, $99 installed. Pioneer detachable face radios starting at $199. Then on radios with CD changer control starting at $219. And kicker boxes starting at $95. Car Audio and Security Designers, Patterson Plank Road, behind the Coach House Diner, North Bergen. Levy Sports Center in West New York, New Jersey, since 1937, is the headquarters for the serious athlete. Levy specializes in custom team uniforms, jackets, athletic equipment, trophies, and awards for teams, leagues, businesses, and schools at discount prices. Levy's has a large selection of football and soccer equipment and shoes. Mention this ad and receive an additional 10% discount. Levy's at 6118 Bergenline Avenue, West New York. Your plan for every sport fan.
You can't get a Taylor's Fit at a department store. You can only get it at Vihan Taylor's. Family owned and operated for over 30 years. Vihan's been the name in custom men's clothing. You'll find quality suits imported from Italy. At Vihan's, you're dealing with the owners, not salespeople. So you can be sure you'll get the best fit. At Vihan's, a custom-made suit is not as expensive as you think. You can get one for about the same price as off the rack. And now, Vihan's has free parking for your added convenience. Vihan's, 60th and Burger Line in West New York. And we are back. JFK Stadium, Red Wings after the one-yard plunge by Rashard Casey are out 7-0. In to kick is Donnie Huggins. Huggins blasts one nicely over the head into the end zone. Nice job by Donnie Huggins. Unreturnable ball as Brian Dietz will just have to watch it roll onto the track. And no one is happier about that than head coach Ed Stinson. They practice oh. that obviously a lot, Jim. Donnie Huggins is pretty happy too, but Ed Stinson, when he sees Donnie Huggins kick the ball out of the end zone like that, he says, that's what I want to see from number three all the time. It's Don tough to do, obviously, but Donnie did it. Johnny, you see him changing his shoe there. He kicks with one shoe, plays defense with another. You hear about guys who wear many hats. Donnie Huggins wears many shoes. And a good job of coaching, not only from Ed Stinson, but this whole coaching staff of Hoboken. They deserve a lot of credit. They're undefeated coming into this game. Here's Potts on first down. Six and a half minutes to go. Second quarter. Hoboken up seven. Potts looking to throw. Rolls out left. Potts throws on the run. He's got a man complete. Stacked up and thrown to the turf. Well, Wilbur got a hold of him uh, and was able to push him back. On the reception, uh, number 31, Mike Manassi. Manassi you know, with a nice catch, and then Wilbur Valdez was able to push him back a little bit. But Sparta may become even more of a dangerous team now, Jim, if they feel they have to open it up. A nice pass. Spots his receiver, and then Wilbur pushes him back, and they uh, take a couple hits, does Manassi. Well, I don't think Sparta thinks they got to open up as much as play their game now that they got a little field position. Here's Potts. First down, hands off to Brown, the big back, as he goes through. I mean, you look at Justin Potts. There's the a kid who's come in throwing 144 passes. So he throws on the average of 14 passes a game. So well, you know he airs it a little bit. You know, uh, field position obviously will set the tone, and you said it, they got better field position, so now they feel like they can do some different things maybe because you can throw out everything they did down by the goal line you're limited to what you can do <laughs> and he's all wired up he's all wired up you better be careful somebody might pull that cord <laughs> second down and eight for the spartans here's the senior justin potts moving his backs around potts gives to the second back through plowing straight ahead Looks to be Kevin Wyatt. Just a sophomore is Kevin Wyatt. Wyatt picked up about four on the play. Five minutes and ten seconds to go in the second quarter. Hoboken leads 7-0 in the finals of group three. You see Mike Thomas come into the game for Kevin Wyatt, the sophomore. Nice to see. You. Must be nice for a sophomore to get into a big state final like this. Third, go ahead, Jim. Third down and five. Well, thank you, Anthony. Justin Potts comes over center. He's got Brown and Thomas behind him. Here's the Brown, the second back through. The big man's got the first down. Oh, Sean Brown, when he gets in rumbling, he can do some damage. Juan Lopez was finally able to bring him down, but like you said, he's uh, for a big kid, he's got uh, some good moves, and he finds a nice hole here. Makes a cutback, and Lopez finally trips him up. But I talked about uh, Sparta trying to open things up a little bit. They also got to try to get the ball into this big halfback's hands as much as they can because Brown, in their upset win, was a big factor with two touchdowns and over 150 yards of offense. Here's a first down for Potts. Ball just inside the 50-yard line. Goes to Brown once again. Brown off the right side has got some room. Brown fumbles the ball, picks it back up. Will be knocked out of bounds. No harm there. But you know, Anthony, you made an excellent point when you compared Sean Brown to Craig Hayward. I mean, the comparison in just I'm telling looks you. is unbelievable. I he saw. absolutely has the Craig Hayward body when Craig came at Spurring. He's maybe a little smaller, well, Shorter. a lot sm smaller than Craig, but he's that type of player. Because you can't look at him and not think this guy's got moves. Because even though he's 220 pounds and he's about 
a foot wide in the midsection. And good job of juke it. Oh, a penalty here. Look at this. Well, I think what they're saying is he was hit by Steve Beerson out of bounds. Wow. And uh, so Hoboken is letting uh, Sparta. So the personal foul makes a 12-yard run into about a 27-yard play. Exactly. They're uh, responding from Hoboken's uh, touchdown. Preston Gag split wide left. Here's Potts. First and 10, ball just outside the 20. In motion is Manasey. Here's Potts. He's looking left. He's got Manasey. Potts looking, looking, looking. Shovels off one quick. He's got a man, Brian Dietz. Brian Dietz down to about the 10-yard line. Brian, Brian Dietz with a nice catch to him, but credit Justin Potts. He set that whole thing up. He rolled out. He waited. He waited. He never forced anything, and then he spotted Dietz, and he got him the football. You're right. Watch Potts right here. Wait. Still shows good poise right here. Waits for something to open up. The deep receivers weren't open, and Dietz just flashed across the field, and there he is. So a first down for the Spartans. Ball at about the 10-yard line. Here's Potts. Potts gives to Brown. Brown off the right side. He's got some room. Brown working his way. Look at the big man go. Brown right down to about the goal line. And you got to put some helmets on Sean Brown if you're going to take him down. One man's not going to do it. Well, you have to also give credit to the offensive line up front for Sparta because they gave him a nice hole off that right side. He followed it. Some good blocking up front. And O'Hook was trying to keep him out of the end zone. Well, they're going to have to try again. Second down and goal, 320 to go here in the second quarter. Sparta trails by seven, but they are knocking on the door. Deets with Brown right behind him. Potts over center. Look for Brown to get the ball here. The big man, tough to stop. Here's Potts. Gives to Brown, the big man untouched. Sparta's within one. So Sparta responds to Hoboken's touchdown with a little help from a uh, penalty for uh, unsportsmanlike, but credit Sparta for coming back and showing that uh, they deserve to be here today also. Excellent job by the left side of that offensive line. And here's one of those wild, as you take another look, they sealed off the end right there and Potts went in, Brown went in untouched. And now Brown will have the task of kicking the extra point. And here's one of those wild formations where the whole offensive line lines up left. The snapper, the holder, lines up right. And if you want to credit those guys up front, you got to talk about Mr. Andrea, Wickander, Langerap. So check out this formation right here on the extra point. <laughs> Trying to create some confusion with the defense. So Sean Brown kicking the extra points today. Has not kicked them all year. Here comes the team. Brown lines up. Looking to tie this game up. Snap. Kick. Blocked. Got a piece of it was Anderson. Well, that is huge, Jim, because... Uh, oh, have we after, seen this? You know, we sound like we should just we should just get a record and play it every time we say this. <laughs> but how many times have you seen that extra point miss and come back and haunt the team? Uh, we saw it last night when Hackensack and North Bergen played. And uh, I don't know if Anderson got a piece of it as much as he just bothered Brown coming off that right side. Very close. I don't think he got a piece of it, but Brown had to see him coming through his peripheral vision and the kick shanked to the right and just like you said 7-6 it seems like it's early in the ball game but come fourth quarter time it adds up and how about our New York chicken stat right now <laughs> New York chicken and Hoboken providing the stats Leo Garcia tells us that Brown has nine rushes 55 yards and obviously a touchdown early on in this game which puts him at 988 yards for the year he came in with 933, so Sean Brown working his way towards 1,000 yards on the season. And you see the score there. The Spartans come right back on the help of a big penalty. And they are on the board after a couple good plays by their QB and their fullback. And here's the kick. Kick goes right. Valdez takes a look. Casey lets it roll. Goes out of bounds. 
Casey did a good job, waited it out, boldly spotted at the 35-yard line. You know what, Jim? Or did it hit Casey's it hit leg? Uh, I think it went out of bounds. A break. Right there for Sparta. I don't understand that. Uh, <laughs> I'm not quite sure what happened there, but I think Casey was hoping that it would go out of bounds. Well, Valdez and Casey were around it. We'll take another look. Here's the kick. I mean, I, you, you know you have to jump on it because it's a free ball. And I think what happened is it went off the leg of Rashad Casey. And if that's what happened, yes, that's what did. happened. Wow. Eagle Eye, Tony Fusilli. Picks it out. Good job by you, Anthony. First down for the Red Wings. Ball's just inside the 20. Here's Casey, gives to Anderson. Anderson's got room up left side. Ravon Anderson, look out. Anderson turns the 31 man to beat. Anderson, nobody's going to catch him. Oh, Nelly, Ravon Anderson is gone. Oh, Nelly is 80, 82 yards on the play. Ravon Anderson, he's into this game now. He's ready. Ravon wants to start off right now. And he makes a big play like he's done all year long when he gets to the outside, Jim, and breaks that tackle. No one is going to catch the junior, Ravone Anderson. Boy, if you think he had speed, you know now. Take another look. Anderson picks up the block, breaks the one tackle, leaves that man in the dust. How about that hand move right speed. there? Just if you kind of like battered away. Mike Thomas, Mike Thomas, number 20, could do nothing but look as 34 was chugging down the sidelines. And, Jim, that's something you just don't teach. That's pure talent. That's 82 yards. Big play by Anderson. And that's just got to pump up Hoboken, knowing that gentleman is coming back next year. Here's Donnie Huggins for the extra point. It's a big one. Huggins. Low liner gets it through. Doesn't matter how it looks. Exactly. They all just one point. Tomorrow in the paper, it just says extra point good. Doesn't say it just went over to Copos. Or the crossbar. Take another look. We're going to take another look at this fine run. Some nice blocking out in front. Again, Andre Bolden having Beautiful. a great game. He sealed it off. And then Ravone Anderson does what he does so often. Gets to the outside and shows his pure speed. As he takes off, no one can catch him. Only a junior. Makes a big play, really, Jim, when Hoboken needed one. Anderson with his 11th touchdown on the season right there. And that's what you want from you guys. <laughs> Look at that shot right there. The three Spartans just chasing number 34 into the end zone. Big time play. 82 yards just like that. This ball game is 14-6. Think about it though. Spartan thinks, hey, you know, we got this game. Hoboken, you know, they can be had today. With two minutes and 41 seconds to go, Hoboken made a big play. They get a touchdown by uh, Ravone and it kind of changes the momentum and the emotion of this game. Especially plants a seed in the mind of Spartans. And I think it all started with that missed extra point. Because Hoboken, all, although they gave up the touchdown, they walked off the field thinking, hey, we still got the lead. Right. It just goes, goes to show you when you got backs with the ability that Hoboken has for those linemen. Just give them one good block and it could be good night. As it was. Here's the kickoff. This one will be fielded. Kelly Stevens. Stevens up across the 20. Takes a couple hits. He'll be driven to the turf at about the 23. And Hoboken seems to have a little more pep in their step right now. And Mike Furcom with a nice tackle. So 2.33 to go here. And we'll see what Sparta can do. If they can mount a little drive and try and get a little momentum back as they head into the half. Here you see uh, Forkham comes all the way down the field, number 11, and just puts a pop right there. And was able to bring down the ball carrier. Ravone Anderson, nine carries, 123 yards, one touchdown. He keeps playing like that. He goes down to Lisa and 10th. He eats for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe not, but he'll definitely be uh, considered as the Lisa on 10th player of the game. It's a little early for that. He's not Eddie Stinson. All wrapped up today in his wire garb. Got the plays in the uh, behind the belt. Some, something's wrong with the slack on that rope there, Jimmy. Either that or Ed Stinson's uh, trying to send a signal to his team that if uh, things keep going the way they did before that Anderson touchdown, he's going to tie those guys up. Look at that. That's when you got a good play. You just got to caress him on the sidelines a little bit. Make sure he's doing okay. Give him a little <laughs> hug. Give him a little hug if he wants. Do a little dance. Look like they're dancing over there, right? <laughs> I think Ravone's got a little cramp in his back. Oh, uh, okay. 
Take a look at Ed Stinson wearing the coach's headset from the eyes in the sky. Trying to repeat as a state champion and top off what has been an outstanding year here in Hoboken. He knew he'd have a good team. He knew he had a great team. He had Casey back, Valdez, Terso, Andre Bolden. He lost his big two-way player in Ivan Ramos who went down to Rutgers, but uh, he got most of the team back and uh, they won their games and they're here now playing for a state championship. So here's Sparta. 2.27 to go in the second quarter. They trail by eight. Potts on first and ten. Potts gives to Brown. Brown up left side. He's got some room. Brown, look out to the outside. Sean Brown. Brown crosses the 40 up to about the 47. Sean Brown working. Well, somebody from Hoboken has to find an answer to number 45, Sean Brown, because Sean Brown right now is getting started and nobody is really slowing him down that's the key Jim nobody up front is slowing this big fella down and he's just running through that secondary uh, uh, like a man on a mission Sean Brown how about the block right there though by number 11 for Sparta that's Brian Dietz good block by him and he just helped his big fullback go over 1,000 yards for the season so first down here's Potts from the 45 Potts gives to Brown once again. Brown off the right side. He's got some room again. And Sean Brown goes ahead for about eight yards. 150 to go here in the second quarter. And Sparta's not done yet in this half. You know, we haven't seen a lot of Sean Brown, obviously, this year, Jim. But you wonder, he keeps getting the ball. Uh, you know, if this kid ever gets tired. <laughs> Here's Potts on second and two. He looks to throw. Potts over the middle. He's got a man tipped out of his hand. The first man... Tipped it out of Todd Ferguson's hand. Good defense right there. Juan Lopez uh, really had the player from Sparta in front of him and had only one option to try to strip that ball when he caught it. And he was able to get that done. Looked like Todd Ferguson was going to come in with that one. Then Juan Lopez was able to put the hit on him and jar the ball loose. That will stop the clock with 1.32 to go. Second quarter, bring up a third down and one. And you got to think that this is Sean Brown territory once again. Stinson calling out, probably saying look out for the play action fake. The motion man is deep. They swing it out to Brown. Brown looking for the right side. Brown head towards the marker. He's got the first down. Knocked out of bounds at about the 38. So Brown with a two-fold gain gets the first down and gets out of bounds. Exactly. That was more important, the fact that he was able to get out of bounds, although the clock is stopped because of the first down, Jim, but it gives him a little bit more time. You see Look Brown holding that ball. like a loaf of bread. He better get that in, and finally they're able to get the big running back out of bounds. But, again, Sean Brown doing something as Hoboken that not too many teams have done this year, and that's kind of overpower them and run at will against them. 125 to go, first down. Ball inside the 40-yard line. The senior Justin Potts brings him up, trying to get something before the half. Here's Potts. Potts looks to throw again. Potts, flush left and looking. Potts is going to have to keep this one. Knocked out of bounds. At about the 37, he'll pick up maybe one or two on the play. So good job by Torso and Sakala finally forcing uh, Potts out of bounds, and good job by the secondary, too. As Potts rolled out, looked, looked, couldn't find anything, and decided, well, maybe he's just trying to let me get out of get out of bounds, stop the clock, and Torso came up, forcing him to get out of bounds. Good-looking quarterback, Justin Potts. You see him with the eyes open on the run. Minute 19 to go in the half. Here's Potts on second down and about eight. Motion is Manassee. Potts gives to Brown. Off the draw. Brown plowing straight ahead. And this time they drive him back after he picks up about five. Well, that time it took Rory Prelo and Valdez, both of them, to kind of shut down Brown, although he got a big gain. The clock continues to run. No huddle right now for Sparta. Sparta up to the line of scrimmage. Potts calls out the signals. Here's Potts. Gives it the draw once again to Brown. Brown goes ahead very close to a first down. And he has it. I'll tell you, not only is Sean Brown going to be tied at the end of this game, so is Wilbur Valdez. Those two big bodies are going at it, Jim. And, uh, you know, we talked to uh, the Sparta coach about his field goal unit, and he said he would go with it if he had to. And but he hasn't kicked one yet this year. Exactly. Clock rolls on. 40 seconds to go here. 